Hey guys, welcome to my channel. In this video, I'll be reviewing the Kiri Engine app. It's a photogrammetry 3D scanning app for the iPhone and Android. I made a couple scans today. Let's start with the wicker basket. I placed the basket on the coffee table and walked around the basket in small intervals, taking 70 photos. The app does a good job of guiding you through the process. Once my scan was processed, I emailed myself the download link and imported the FBX into my Maya scene. The FBX comes with cameras which I grouped, hid, and placed inside the model. I was pleasantly surprised by the quality of the model. There's a lot of detail here. I, I wouldn't expect this from a 70 camera scan if I used the capture reality, but uh, from this app, I'm pretty amazed by it. The textures are pretty impressive as well. You get an 8K JPEG, which has a lot of detail and the quality is really good. It's smooth, there's not a lot of, I didn't see any jumps or bumps in the texture layering that you would see from other uh, projections. So this was really good. Once you group the cameras and hide them and place them inside the model, you can then take the model and scale it from origin. And if you make a cube, you can snap the manipulator to the top of the cube holding D and V. You can then hold X and snap the cube to the grid and scale it up, just make it like the size of the grid. Then go back to the model and pick three vertices on the surface. Uh, find the most flat, flattest surface. So in this case, it's the table. If you if the magazine was flat, you could use the magazine. So here I'm just selecting three vertices. One, two, three. Holding shift, you want to right click on the cube, go to vertex and select three vertices on top of the cube. And then go to modify, snap line objects, three point to three points. And this will snap the model to the cube, which is aligned to the grid. You can then select the, the, the model and group it and then just rotate it 180 degrees in X. It's difficult to work with very dense models, so if you go to show in the viewport and turn off selection highlighting, you'll be able to see the object you're working with without seeing the really dense wireframe. And then I'm just going to scale it down to a manageable size. Now I can delete the faces of the scan that I don't need, which is most of the table. So just select them holding Control shift and then hit delete. And now we're ready to retopologize. There are a couple of approaches to retopologizing. One of them is to quadro. And to do that, we just make the object live by pressing the magnet button. And then going into the modeling toolkit and clicking the quadro button. And then you can start making geometry. You just click, click, click. Once you make four points, you can hold shift and make faces in between them. This could take a long time, and for an object like this, there is a better way to do this. I'm going to turn off live, make a cylinder, and then proceed to make a very rough model of the basket. Lining it up as close as I can, but not going overboard, because once we're done, we're just going to project the detail using shrink wrap. Once the model is done, we're ready for shrink wrap, but I always forget the order of operation. So I always like to set up a little test. I make a cube and then also a sphere. And the sphere is my dense model and the cube is my low res model. And then I try my, uh, the order of operation for the shrink wrap. So I first, first select the cube, then select the sphere, and then go to the form and shrink wrap. The setting, just vertex normals, works fine, bidirectional on. And if you see the cube shrink to the sphere, then our settings are correct. You can delete both. So then we select first the low res model, then select the scan model, and then apply the shrink wrap. At this point, we can start adding some extra geometry. I add loops where I need extra detail, and then I subdivide a couple times. I repeat this until I'm happy with the result. 
Here I'm adding the little handle, so I'm just adding some extra detail, extruding it, and adding some loops. Once it's roughed out, I do another shrink wrap and add more detail and then repeat. And you do this until uh, you feel like you've added as much detail as you can without making the model too dense. It's a balancing act and uh, sometimes you go back and forth a couple times. So now we're ready to go back to Quadro. So I like to use Quadro to smooth out the details and all you need to do is select the scan and press the magnet key to make it live and then select the low res geometry and click Quadro. You can then hold B and drag out using the middle mouse button the fall off and you'll see it as red and orange uh, fall off and then you can start moving things around so what I'm doing is I'm, I'm taking the dense edges and moving them to the uh, corners of the model so that so the detail is concentrated there and then you can use shift to smooth things out if you hold B and then middle drag out to the right you can then scale the fall off and then you can uh, hold while holding shift smooth out the area um, that is bunching or looks too rigid and some I'm going through and just smoothing out all the little detail this also makes the low res model a little more accurate it will snap into the peaks and valleys a little better To get a little more detail, uh, now you can think about subdividing the model again. Now if you subdivide it, it's going to shrink a little bit and it's not going to match anymore. So once you subdivide it, you want to go back to Quadro and then you can use the self select. So just make it bigger and if you hold shift and just kind of click a little bit, not too much, you can go around the model snapping the whole new geometry back onto the high res surface. And you just go through and make sure you hit all of the areas. And you can make your self select larger if it's taking a long time. So now we can take the edge where the lid meets the bottom of the wicker basket and just push up those vertices. That way we can create that proper lip. Make sure you turn off uh, live, otherwise, when you do this, it will actually stick to the surface and just go up the side so i'm just scaling the edge loops and moving them up to make it look like the lid is coming down over the rest of the basket so the model is done and now we're ready for some uvs and what i like to do is just do a projection plane projection from y this just kind of takes all the EVs and compresses them down. And also sometimes when you're modeling, uh, you might some objects might not have or faces might have any EVs. So this just forces a UV projection onto the surface. And then I'm going to take some edge loops and pick which ones I want to cut and which ones uh, I want to keep and go through and unwrap the whole uh, model. So you can cut everything up and place them uh, from zero to one space, give it the most texture space. And now we're ready to project our texture onto the new UVs, onto the low res geometry. And for this, we're going to use a Maya tool called transfer maps. Uh, to make things easier, uh, I like to name the low res model target and then the high res source. And you don't even need to see the high res model. Um, and I just place them next to each other. And then all we need to do is bring up the transfer maps tool and hold spacebar and go to lighting shading transfer maps and then here I like to make sure I reset everything so I clear all the, the the targets and the source and then also remove the existing map I want to assign to a new shader and for testing the highest map you can make is 4k uh, but for testing, we're going to set this to preview and we'll do a 1K map just to test. So 1024 by 1024. And we're going to make a diffuse shader. Make sure it's assigned to a new shader. And then you click the folder icon 
give it a name, so we'll place it into source images, make it a PNG, and just give it any name we would like. Save, and then you want to select the target and click Add Selected to the target. Select the source and Add Selected to the source. Uh, you can hide the source now. Press 6 so that you will see the texture when it's done and just hit Bake. And you can see it's already done and it looks pretty good. And we can actually look at it in UV space to see how the texture unwrapped right onto the UVs. Which gives you a good start for doing your final textures. And once you're, you're sure that it's working, we can set our texture to 4K. And I found that the quality difference between low and high is like barely noticeable. So I just keep it from preview to low. And that gives you a good result. And then just hit bake. So now you can see the 4K texture and it's pretty impressive. The amount of detail that uh, I got from the model and from the texture projection is pretty amazing just for a mobile app that's free. I wouldn't hesitate to use this app in production and uh, I plan to use it on set or just for fun projects at home. Now let's take a look at the other scan that I did and this is an anatomical female figure which one side is painted and the other side is a semi-reflective uh, um, plastic and it's that the the plastic part is a very uh, hard part to scan um, with photogrammetry if you use a laser scanner it's much better so I'm gonna do the same process here where I scale the model and then use the three-point uh, snap to snap the, the surface here to the grid plane. I was expecting this model to fail pretty miserably uh, because I know from uh, past photogrammetry projects that scanning very shiny same color surfaces is very difficult but I was really surprised by how much detail uh, Kiri app was able to get out of this. Um, and I would totally use this for uh, scale reference or proportion reference. And I think if I used a, a light box with a turntable, I probably would have gotten a much better result. So I actually do plan to try that out. I want to build a, just get some foam core and build a simple uh, light box and get a, a turntable so that I can take photos while uh, rotating the model. That way I think I should be able to eliminate the background and get a much better result from the scan. But the texture detail is pretty amazing. And you can see the side that's painted. Uh, the model itself has way more detail. The volume is much better. And you can actually see the individual muscles in the 3D scan. And the side that is just gray you know, expectedly has missing areas because where the light uh, reflects as you're taking photos, uh, those areas kind of blend together and it's hard to get a 3D model out of it. But it did a pretty good job nonetheless. If you guys want to check out Kiri Engine, uh, just go to the App Store and search for Kiri or go to the Kiri Engine website and you can download uh, from the links there. And if you like this video, please hit the like button, uh, leave a comment and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time.